Yo. Yeah, London life, mate. It's crazy. Yeah, London. I mean... What, 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 you you came from Newham as well, Yeah, Newham. Multicultural yeah. from early, man. That's the thing. I had I've, Filipinos in my lessons. I had... You know what? I didn't have that, but really? I saw a lot of that when I went to, like, St. Francis Church. Okay, so, yeah. So, but, like, my schools were predominantly Asian and, like, African. Mm. And a bit of Caribbean. Like, not a lot of Caribbean. Actually, when I... The first school I went to was a lot of Caribbeans, but... Yeah. It got predominantly African when mm. I went to secondary school. Would you say there was tension in the playground or did everyone get on? Uh, I think post 9-11 era made mm. me realise yes. about colour. Spot on, spot yeah, on. Yeah, I think that time yeah. was when I noticed Asian yeah. people and Muslim people yeah. and someone being Muslim. Like, I always heard of these religions, but... Mm. I didn't know the difference because obviously with most Nigerians, like most of us are like half half. You know what I mean, maybe a dad or a mum is Muslim or was born Muslim or so and so and so. Religion wasn't a thing, but then after nine eleven is when like we kind of really acknowledged okay, Asian people, this you know what I mean. It got drummed into us through the news and stuff like that. Mm. Well, as I didn't notice Asian people as like another race of people. You know what I mean? It's mm. weird, but no. Nah. So I think that was probably my experience. I kind of was just for everyone was one, but there wasn't a lot of English white people in my area. <laughs> yeah, same. In school, there was like yeah. two. There was Polish, but they were even rare at the time. You had like two English people in the whole classroom. And wow. Albanians. Yeah. You got wow. Albanians. Mm. Yeah, Albanians. Yeah, you got Albanians. Because I, I went to school in Dag in a minute, and uh, yeah, okay. you had a mix of, mix of everyone. Yeah. There. And when I moved to Essex, when I moved to Clacton on the Sea, wow. bro, no lie, there was only two black people in the whole school, man. What's wow. that? What's it? What? Did you, how did you um, feel when, like, when you were young and you went to a place where it's just like, okay, my people are gone. It wasn't easy, man. And I was switching at my parents, but I was so pissed. And what did your parents say? So, bro, you know what? Yeah, I feel like did they prep you? I didn't really know. We didn't get prepped at all, and I didn't really know the reason why we moved. But it was only later on, as I got older, I realized that there was a lot of shit going on in that area. Mm. You know, as a kid, you don't really see what's really going on, but obviously they clocked onto stuff and they decided the best move for us was to move to Clatter, which was like, um, <laughs> which is a lot, I want to say safer, but there's a lot less going on there. But in doing so, put me in a situation where I'm not with anyone that looks like me. You know what I mean? I feel very, um, like as a teenager, I was very like on edge. So I'd be walking down the streets and, so a group of boys would drive by and be like, oi, nigga, oi, blackie, you know, them type of things. Like, um, you seen, um, remember the Titans? Yeah. Yeah, when, mm. when, like, the type of racism they're going through and, you know, just verbal attacks. Even, like, I never got physically abused or attacked or anything, luckily. But um, They were scared. More, but I was scared, man. Well, they were scared. They were scared nah, of you. Nah, I was scared, <laughs> brother. I was skinny, short, you know what I mean? There's, like, nothing to me. I do believe um, that, though. What you just said just yeah, now. Yeah, they're scared of you. But you, it's 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 kind. Of, I say it's kind of true though, because for a lot of people out there, they'd never seen. Um, for a lot of people out there, they wouldn't have never seen a black person with their own eyes, because there's like, in in s towns around the country that people have like um, I say people have like a kind of small town mentality, where they're born there, they probably die there, but they don't really go out, or venture out, and you know, experience different. Um, yeah, di like different have different experiences and stuff. So um, you'd be surprised how many um, outs like people that live outside London have never been to London. Mm, yeah. they, the, they, the London they see is what they see on TV, basically, and that's why they think London is a mad yeah. thing. I've yeah, been, I've met <laughs> loads of people yeah. that have never been to London. Like, if you go Birmingham, them sides there, <laughs> scary. <laughs> right. Them lot are still in like I think two thousand and eight. <laughs> Like, Yo, you got I saw a brother with boot cuts, yeah. NY hat, <laughs> Air Forces Yo. matching the T. And Brummel are coming for you, fam. Bruv. What are you uh, talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I went to Birmingham, I was shot. Them guys are still in 2008. Like, they look like how when I went to uni, that's because a, a lot of them came to our uni and I was like, bro, like, you Birmingham a lot, like. Backwards, still wearing June and shit. Trust me, <laughs> like they listen to a hey, proper junior rap. Was lit. Back in our rock away and them yeah, things. I mean. Yo, what about you though, Matt? Um, Belgium is a little bit different. Like, I grew up in like, um, well, first of all, I grew up in Brussels, which is like multicultural. We have Ooh. black, <laughs> we have black people predominantly. Um, 
Congolese and Moroccans. Then you have white people. And then we moved out. My mum wanted to move out a little bit out of London. So let's say it's like if you live in London, I mean Brussels, if you live in London, you would be living in Luton. I was living kind of like that, which is called Nino, but it's pr- predominantly okay. white. So we got there. There was like like a small community of black people. I would say like a, f- let's say like 10 families, something like that. So you were outnumbered. Out Outnumbered. And the Heavily. thing is as well, we, was that is that a neg- negative thing? Did you? Yeah, because we lived in the town basically where like, it's you could say it's kind of the head of the racist people. Oh really? Mm. Yeah, that was really like. So also in politics, this re- this town is known to be racist. So you experienced racism? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot quite a lot. How would that? I say? think it, it built me. It, it built, built me. me. Yeah. But it, it it built me, but it gave me a lot of anger as well, because. Mm. Every time, all you were doing is looking for fights. Does that anger still reside in you to this day? It you, does. Or do you understand? Uh, how do you put your take on it now? At your um, age now? At my age now, obviously, I grew up and I'm more mature. I know how to get around with things. I know, like, different cultures. I know I shouldn't be walking in the street and looking. Let's say if I see a white person, I'll be like, I don't like them. No, I can't be doing that. That's different. That's just, I'm as racist as them, yeah. you could say. Yeah. You know what's mad, yeah? So I remember f- as a kid... I'd walk down the streets and like a young kid and I walk down the streets and white people would cross the road from me, man. And yeah, definitely. Oh, it even happened normal. to me here in London. It happens yeah. in London. It happened you know to me in London. But you know you know what's bad about it? So for me, I it got to the point where I didn't want that. So I would cross the street whenever I saw a white person. Mm. And I feel like wow. that's so wrong, man, because you shouldn't feel like your presence is a threat. Mm. Especially definitely when you don't mean no harm like to that. anyone. Like Do you know psychologically what? that it kind of it's it kinda bad. Messes it's up, very man. it right. messes up. But you know what? I've conditioned my brain to see that as a positive thing now. So now when I'm walking, I feel like yes, I'm walking. This is the presence of a black man. Mm. Yeah, you should cross the road when, mm. when you're in my presence. Like, I'm a king. Mm. Now, honestly, that's my that's mm. that's that's the narrative I have in my mind. Yeah. I'm like boy. as a black man, that's if I walk into a room and I make people feel uncomfortable, that's the power of a black man. That's, mm. that's interesting. Trust me, I carry that with me. You know, everywhere I go. Yeah. Like what, what? I've got a different approach. Um, What's your approach? I, I kind of um, it's it's a weird one, isn't it? Because as much as like I feel like a lot of the things that white people do, the ones that are ignorant about these things, it's a lot of prejudice. So, like for example, let's say in business and um, for example, when it comes to hiring people and stuff like that, we might say yeah, we might hire the best candidate, but always going to work with our friends. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Now, like, we can't be, like, totally be like, nah, it's racism for them, but it's for me, it's hiring my friends. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Low-key, they, everyone does the same things. And that's why it's very important for us to kind of, like, liberate ourselves and be in positions where we kind of have to do the same thing because unconscious bias play a big part in our decision-making. So it's, like, premeditated faults. So let's say, for example... You might see someone you're familiar with and someone you don't know. You're not going to go to the person you don't know. You're going to go to the one you're familiar with because mm. it's a mm. safer option. You can now say my second thought was, yeah, maybe I should try something new. But realistically, ma- majority of people like comfort zones and, you know what I mean, being mm. with people they're familiar with. I'm not really like that, you know. I remember when I was at university, I used to get on well with the Eastern Europeans, um, particularly the um, Romanians on my course. And... I remember that like, the black people used to look at me like, yo, Rich, like, Riz, like come, why don't you come and sit over here with us? And come I'm to like, the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, no, like I actually get on like, with these people. So mm. like, I don't see it as us and them. It's just, you know, whoever I get on with, energy. Yeah, that's it, man. You should never see it as like, on, like teams or us and them. Yeah. Like you just the get vibe. on with whoever you get on with, man. That's yeah. the way you stay it should be. pure. If you're genuine and you stay but, pure but, and genuine. But all the English the people on my course, they used to sit together consistently. Mm. And that's when I knew that listen, you know what? we're all cool. It's just, you know, <laughs> I'll end it there. Well, I think <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think that's everywhere though. Like when I was, I'm still in uni, but I mean, last year when I was in my class and my lessons and that, you had predominantly Italians. And Italians will sit together. But mm. if I'm black, when I come in the class, okay, late. I'm not saying I was always late, but if I come in the class late, I'll look for the first black person to go sit to. And that's natural, mm. you know. I think that's what I'm saying. Natural. You naturally gravitate to your. No, own I totally time. understand. And, and that's I why I say that's, your yeah. unconscious bias. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not a decision making. You just go. 
Yeah. Because it's someone you see, you know. You know so if I've, not black, then mixed race. I've Just got a very good um, example of a situation. So um, when I started acting, I used to do a lot of extras work, innit? So like, um, you know, you're dressed up in costumes and stuff. Mm. Uh, for example, you'd be in police costumes, yeah. um, army stuff and whatever. So what? So one thing I realised is that um, when, they, when everyone's in their costumes, you could have seven, eight different, 100 different costumes. Everyone would always go to whoever they're, uh, whoever they're wearing the same costume as. Like, it's the same thing with race. You go to what is familiar, yeah, what is yeah. what feels comfortable. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it's actually yeah. it's actually crazy. And the police, <laughs> people who were dressed in police costumes, they'd actually feel like police. They'd stand like police. They'd look at people. They'd look down on people. Wow. They'd be they'd be in their gangs, you know. Yeah. They, they feel strong in that police costume. Really, really these times, it's just a costume. Yeah. The police do you, do you feel like they, they feel that way or it, they, it looks that way? I feel like they feel that way. They feel that way. They definitely feel that way. Because I've, I've, you get a sense of even, authority. Yeah, because even when I'm wearing a costume, like even when I wore the costume a few times, I'd feel like a sense of, like just a, a small sense of authority. You know, you're standing yeah. there. You know, you got your fake um, gun on your hip. Yeah. You got a belt on and stuff, and all this heavy. But you know well, what? That's because you, society. You guys, society no, no, has told no, us because no, you guys are just good actors. You're just ready to go into the role. That's why. Yeah, obviously <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Yeah, really? there's that, but um, but we see that on a regular day basis in society. Anyway, we know like what? Why? Imagine I'm just saying like, I know if I'm let's say if I'm driving and mm. um, I know everything is in order. Like I have everything, my papers are done, mm. everything is correct. Why, when we see a police car behind us, we start stressing? Mm. Why? It's mad, you haven't you know, done anything wrong. It's conditioning, wrong. isn't it? We're Condition. just in condition to fear the police, Mind's and like my heart will actually start racing. My hand, yeah, my hands yeah. will be sweating, and that. It's just weird. It's just yeah. what society has taught us from on a day to day basis. When you see the police, you get especially as a black man, you get scared because they f- think you're gonna do something wrong. You or know, you what? think you did something wrong because that's what you used to do in the past or something like that. Because it wasn't easy for us in the past when you it's, grew up. Because we know that it doesn't take much for a black person to go down. Definitely, I mean, you don't have to Definitely. do much these days to get in trouble with the law. Um, and I think that's what we we always have in our mind whenever we don't see don't pay police, your fines they're gonna bring, put you, you know, in jail see like some type of authoritative f- figure like we know that it doesn't take much for us to be in the wrong um, and that's why like our parents fear so much when we go out you know what I mean yeah my yeah. auntie used to tell me all the time like I don't want you I'd rather have you guys at home than go out yeah like, she would probably be scared but I never used to understand like we come back home fine we, I would go out with my two cousins so we're free but she says nah you don't know it's, it's not like I'm I'm not supposed to say this, but actually, I'm going to say it. It's not our world. Like this is not our country, regardless. <sighs> Man, I don't like that. I don't I'm like. I'm that. sorry. This is not crazy. our country. Like, you know, I don't like thinking like that. Yeah. Regardless, this, this is the truth. This, it's not our country. This, I've been here for so many years. It's like, nah, man. It's still not your country. It's man, and we taking over, baby. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, go and walk into we a pub. Over go, 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 walk to, go, go and walk into yeah. some pub in the sticks and, and go with that attitude, bro. Bro, I don't go to pubs to this day. Pubs are closing nah, down anyway, man. Nah, They're getting out of business. <laughs> Bruv, I remember one time we went to uh, watch um, uh, an England game and England were playing like an African team. I can't remember which one it was. But England, uh, lo- England were losing. See the way the locals are shouting at... Uh, oh, the racist the, slurs. Fucking can't I can imagine. Back, cunts, blah, blah, blah. And I I'm sitting imagine. there with my boys. And before we even walked in there, I told my boys, look, this is not a good idea. They were all white, obviously. I told him I don't feel comfortable going to this pub. They were like, "No, it's fine, it's cool, it's cool." cool. Nah, Went in nah, there now. Nah, England nah. start losing. Fucking black this, black that. They all looked at me. I said, "This is right." <laughs> and to this day, I don't go into pubs. I don't yeah, feel man. comfortable. Yeah, in pubs. but then when the black people score for the country, they're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, of See? course. Yeah. And 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 they're, they're, I'm not gonna lie, the English squad is predominantly black. It's hardly, 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 not, hardly, hardly white, is it? Yeah, not predominantly, but it has a good amount of people. Good amount of black persons. Good amount. But so, yeah, something uh, I wouldn't understand. But I had that back in the day as well. When like, my has anyone used to kickball? Yeah, yeah. When Ooh. I used to, I used to kickball mm. in white teams. And all. Like we had a couple of black people, but it was a white team. Like uh, because I come from a white area. Yeah, well, yeah, I grew up in a white area. You could say that. And when we would go play away games, is in white areas as mm. well. And when Oops. after the game, when you be in the pub, obviously my my team has my back in it, but it'll be so weird like the the atmosphere when I'll be in the pub because it's like it's a white pub. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. When you sit there and as a child, you're the only child, and my parents used to come but not all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because they're Same busy here. working, so you're the only one that like. It's just you, man. Just you. 
you feel like it's just you. Yeah. Especially I've had games where I was just by myself and my friend wasn't coming or something like that. And I just feel literally like it's just me. Yeah, I went through the same thing. Um being in uh in a white team, um, like even though it was a team, I always felt like I was alone. Um didn't really feel like there was That's anyone so I could sad, connect man. to. Like it's sad, man. Imagine the the impact it has. This is why I say, boy, I've got my theories, but I just feel like a lot of us are Go damaged on. and Go we don't on. and we don't Listen, know it. Like yeah. we're damaged in certain Go ways that like we don't know it and everyone's just blind to it and it affects us growing up mm-hmm. but we don't know how it's affected us yeah it's, it's, it's only when you actually speak things out that you realise like you put things together man like yeah. this thing I went through when I was younger this is why I am the way I am now or the way I see things yeah. like the way I you know do what? now but that's why I find that topic have you heard of the topic that some people say um, ask I mean or talk about like would if imagine if you marry a white person or whatever yeah. can they ever understand your pain or can ever understand what you've been through nobody can I try to i think i think they can, they can think, try i think they can't yeah but if they would like they can if they they try if they willing to do their own research and stuff but um yeah if you're dealing with someone who has no no um who isn't educated in that area mm. <sighs> there's actually nothing you can connect with man like things that will be said that shouldn't be said you know, you, I feel like as a black person, you shouldn't have to explain why things are, are wrong in this day and age. Like, it's pretty grown adults. Um, so, yeah, let me not, let me not uh, say anything. No, man. talk, talk. See what you got to say. It's a podcast for a reason. That's yeah, cool, bro. Rizzy, you look like you're burning to say something. No, 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 no. Uh, you speak up. Speak your mind. Nah. So it goes. Well, 60 minutes now, by the way. Oh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's done. That's oh. done. All right, cool. All right, well, out. That was a very interesting topic. I didn't have much to say on this one, which is actually bad. But, um, yeah. I'm the oldest the next one. all of us should be talking. Come on, man. Old <laughs> head. I'm from Stratford. Your days were harder than ours, I think. Your uh, days were probably harder this, than ours. You know what? I want to you. Yeah, I'm no, I'm your days. You. Back in the back actually, in the 1950s. Let me, <laughs> let me add my two cents. The maddest thing is, is that I haven't experienced racism as direct as you lot have. Oh. I haven't been called at the N-word. I ain't had nothing. Because... See, living in Newham and that, most people don't leave leave their area. So mm. they actually just chill there. And I chilled in Stratford a lot. Mm. Um, I didn't ever really leave. Like, I'll go like Betton sometimes or Canning Town. Or what years are we talking about? We're talking about the 90s going on to the 2000s. Yeah, but 90, like... <laughs> No, just to make sure, because I'm not from London, yeah, so from I don't London. even know what colour... Oh, so like, actually, I'm let's just colour. say from 2000, the millennium to 2000. See, I was three years old. <laughs> I mean, oh, sorry. You get sorry, it. Somebody's young. I don't know. Um, still a baby boy. Still yeah. a baby boy. I embrace it. <laughs> but yeah, even the fact that you lot have experienced that, it's like kind of like alien, but I know it exists. You know what I mean? Um, for me, I didn't really have that. It was more, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, I experienced that. I went to a school predominantly black, went to Stratford, was predominantly black. And um, I think white people had been around us a lot mm. longer. So they understood that if they were being racist, it wasn't a thing. You would have to intentionally be racist. It wouldn't be unconscious bias or But did you feel it prejudice. through um, police brutality, maybe? Racism, police brutality? You know what it is, yeah? Like those things happen where people got searched unwarranted. But more time, I felt like most people knew what they were doing. Okay. Like I knew yeah. when I was up to no good and that happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I kind of deserved it, you know what I mean? Or maybe that's because I have a level of... I can't believe you now, but then I probably would have thought that it was personal. So yeah, it's a no. weird one. Yeah. But, but anyway, I'll leave on that note. <laughs> and we'll catch up on the next episode. Mate, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Make sure you share with all your friends. Please share. And, and use our Good Man Factory podcast promo code GPOD1 to get 10% off it. I'm out. Peace. Good man. Out.